have a look at Mark chapter 3, at the section from verse 20 right to the end, to verse 35. Um, it's, it's about uh, Jesus and his family. Really interesting. I'll read a bit of it. Then Jesus entered a house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him. For They said, he's out of his mind. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they some, sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him. They told him, your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my, mothers and brother, my mother and brothers, he said. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him. He said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother, my sister, and my mother. So I read you the bit at the beginning of 20 and at the end at verse 35. Mark has this kind of bracketing technique. He runs two stories together. and One story is supposed to reflect on the other one. But I'm just sticking on one bit of it uh, uh, this morning. Um, so wrapped around this story of Jesus casting out demons by the prince of demons, that's the bit that happens in the middle, is this little glimpse of Jesus' home life. And the interwoven story suggests this. Who has authority here? Uh, you know, is it, uh, has Jesus got his authority by having, uh, being in league with the devil or, or something? That's the middle bit. And then who has authority here in his home life? Okay, where does Jesus get his authority from? Okay, I admit he's got authority, they were saying, but where does it come from? And then later, you remember that other bit where it said, he is a bad man, he deceives the people. Okay, the, the issue of control is never far from the surface. And his family had heard that Jesus wasn't eating right. So they came to take charge of him. Isn't that an amazing phrase? They came to take charge of Jesus. Maybe they read the signs that he was becoming a religious fanatic. Is, is that it? Is that what it means? Maybe out of his mind meant that he was distracted by all the crowds and they were trying to help. Maybe they felt that the crowd was riding roughshod over his rational responses. But it's an intriguing thought, isn't it? They came to take charge of him. You see, the Pharisees also tried to take charge of Jesus by saying, Hey! Are you interpreting the law? That's our progress. If we're the ones who interpret the law, we're the guys who've been to seminary. Who, who are you to interpret the law? Herod tried to take charge of him. You remember the, the wise men come and they say, a king is born in Bethlehem. And they said, hey, hey, I'm the king here. And so his version of taking charge was to stamp out this, this, this crisis that had arisen. I'm the king. There's no other kings here, only me. But a far subtler control mechanism comes when your own family's involved. And it's your own mum. So what, what motivated his family to step in to try and take charge? Maybe they were embarrassed by Jesus. Maybe they were fearful for Jesus. Maybe they were concerned, as I say, for his well-being. But whatever the motivation, the issue was control. They came to take charge of Jesus. And Jesus will not be tethered, will not be restrained. He said repeatedly that the claims of following him, the kingdom calling that is on people, had priority even over the calls of family. Remember, Paul, the Apostle Paul, said, I wish you could be like me, you know, single, not married, for the sake of the gospel. He said that the call of the kingdom takes priority over family callings, family concerns. Jesus even said, let the dead bury their own dead. Really, amazingly tough concept. It's not that these things aren't important, family concerns, it's only that they're not prior, they're not first. They cannot be first if God is first. So Mark subtly underscores that point with this discussion of who, the will of God. You know, whoever does the will of God, he is my mother, my brother, my sister. Real family is where Jesus is. Real relationship is wrapped up with the will of God. But here's the point, the simple point for today. When you say Jesus is Lord, you say the last word. You can't then take it back. You can't then put control over. He is either Lord or he's nothing.
just a, a moral teaching. You cannot permit another authority in your life. In fact, the first creed in the Christian church was simply three words. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And that's it. There is no other Lord. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve Jesus and yourself. Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things. that They'll be added to you as God sees your need and necessity. Don't worry. But seek first the kingdom of God. You can't serve your family. You can't serve your wife. You can't serve your own ambition or job or sense of achievement. Yourself. But the bottom line in this section is, is this wonderful line, you cannot take charge of Jesus. They came to take charge and he said no. Do you remember that bit in the, the Narnia stories where uh, they say uh, is, he's not a tame lion. Jesus cannot be tethered. He is wild. He is the Lord. If you try to supervise the work of grace in your life, you just end up a Pharisee. You have to let it roll. Are you ready? It's a roller coaster. It's really interesting. It's an adventure like no other. God bless you today.